me, Scotty McClue. A very, very warm welcome, of course, to the internet phone in. Monday night, nothing gets past me. So much to talk about and so little time to do it in Dinky Doo. To all our beautiful TikTokers and, of course, our beautiful YouTubers and our beautiful Facebookers and our beautiful LinkedIn Livers and our beautiful Twitchers. Dinky Doo, I say to you. Who is this calling, Dinky Doo? Good evening, you're live on Scotty's phone in. Who's that? Thank you, dear. it's Kareem Scott. Oh, Kareem, well done, son. Excellent stuff tonight. You've made it. Excellent. <laughs> now, How are you, uh, we're very, very well, yes. Thank you very much. I popped up earlier on the YouTube and the TikTok, and of course you saw me. And uh, that's excellent. Just to remind everybody to subscribe and tap the bell and to come and join us for the phone in. Absolutely, yes. It's, it's, a, it's a Monday night. We've made it. <laughs> yes, and somebody's just said, good evening, Scotland. And that is from America. Isn't that beautiful? Excellent. Yes, yes and America. also somebody... Around the world. Yes, and Doddy's just sent me 10 TikToks. Ah, <laughs> and that's us just started, Kareem. Yes. It's, oh. it's incredible. It really is. So much to talk about, as I say. Now then. What are we at tonight? Oh, Kareem, sorry, before you begin, folks, I've yeah. just had notification that there's a problem with the chat tonight. So they are nothing oh. to do with, uh, uh, sorry, what I would say, circumstances beyond our control. But it seems to be working here. I've got Susan, uh -huh. Beachy Beachy, Dinky Doo, Evening, and uh, Neil O'Gonley is with us, of course, and Jack W. Uh -huh. Hi, Scotty's son. So they all seem to be joining us. Well, I can't, my, I don't know if that's something to do with the internet or, or something wrong with the internet because whenever I'm trying to read any stories on Facebook, it's not letting me through. So I don't know if that's happening to anybody else. All ah, right, that's very, very interesting. And what we've just had, we've had greetings from Scapa Flow in Texas. We've got Doddy <laughs> saying hi, Karim. And we've got hello from Little Scotland in Corby from there. Isn't that lovely? Uh, Fantastic. Yeah. It's just amazing. Well, well, we've got the COP26 approaching at the end of the week. Yes. Uh, I think this Sunday when it kicks off, I think I've got my dates right. What should Glasgow expect from this, Scotty? Well, I don't know how much Glasgow should expect. I know that there may be inconvenience in the traffic. Um, yes, from from that. that point of view. So locally, there could be a lot of inconvenience. But having said that, it's very nice to get the spotlight on Glasgow. Yes. yes you know, yes. so I, I, I really, really like that. You know, I think it's, it's marvellous. How much uh, the world leaders will actually agree to the climate change? Because obviously, there's elements of climate change that go against capitalism uh -huh. but there's also huge scope for capitalism so i think a lot of people will be saying why are we investing in expensive mines and uh, trying to get oil and gas and bring it up from the seabed which is very dangerous and bring it out of the desert when we can maybe all be putting up wind turbines and owning them and charging the people for their free energy I suppose does it not come down to the people that are in charge? You know, money talks at the end of the day, and if you've got big, powerful corporations in charge, they won't want to see their profits destroyed. Um, no, and that's a threat. All this environmental, um, the wind turbines, the the, the sea, the the you know, I, I think we have to be very careful, though, Scotty, because at the end of the day. People are going to lose jobs. I mean, and I think some of the ideas that are coming across, I think we spoke about before, like the plans that they want to do with normal people's houses, you know, Joe Public. Where yes, they, they want wanted to put heat pumps in, get rid of gas boilers, get rid of your diesel cars, get rid of your yeah. petrol cars, uh, give yeah. your electric cars, which don't go very far and are very, very expensive to buy. And then, of course, there's all the charging. So you can go and take your car and fill it up, Kareem, you know, but I mean, 
Where are you going to charge your car, as you so rightly said, if you live in a tenement? Yeah, and I just think as well, in terms for, I mean, when that person came to the house, as I said, for that, to get that water pump or heater outside, I mean, that's up to five grand. People do not have that disposable no. income. No, I mean, so there's obviously, they're obviously the big wigs will be looking for ways to screw some more money out of ordinary people and put it uh, in their pockets. I don't know when somebody is going to explain to people, uh, not rich people, just people with a, a huge amount of money, that they cannot uh, take it with them. Uh -huh. yeah, you know? Exactly. You know, I think, I, I, for me with money, I'm not greedy. I don't think I'm a greedy person. Well, I of course I, you're I not a person. greedy person. You are a giver. You're a gee. You're not a tack. <laughs> Thank you. You're, well, you're I, a gee. I, 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 I think in terms of either from that video, Scotty, that was good. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> seen that. My grandfather. Yeah. But, yes. The, the, for me, if I'm comfortable, I'm happy with that, you know, but I'm not greedy where, you know, every living saint, I want more and more and more and more. If I, if I know there's money there, I'm happy. That's the way I've been brought up. And yes. That's the way that I'll, I'll yes. continue to be at the end of the day. But if you look just now, Scotty, the, the petrol again has been up even more at the weekend. We're talking about yes. 143. Yeah, now I don't, I don't know, know why they're doing this. So much of this is duty. So the government has the ability to keep these prices down. You know, and right. why is it going up if we're saying that we're thinking coming out of oil? Yes. Well, there we go. You know, and, why is it still going up? I mean, we're making our own oil. Scotland is uh, surrounded by oil, by gas, you know, by coal. I mean, a lot of people are talking about going back to coal. Can that be clean? Is there a way to make it a lot cleaner? Well, cool? um, I don't think they should have shut, and I think they may even have demolished Long Annett Power Station. Now, I don't know how familiar you are with Long Annett. When you used to come across the road from Fife towards the 5th right. of Forth, you could look down to your left beside the river, and here was this giant power station with a huge big chimney called Long Annett. And Long Annett right. used to be keeping the lights on for us, along with places like Inverkip, Chapel Cross, which was nuclear, um, uh -huh. you know, down in uh, in, in Annan, in Dumfrieshire. Um, what else did we have? There's huge power stations um, along the east coast. So you've got, uh, you had Hunterston as well. That was another one in the west coast. And then you had Dunray in the north of Scotland. And then you had uh, Sizewell down south, and you had, oh, I'm just trying to remember the name of it, uh, just along the road from where I lived in East Lothian at Skate Raw, uh, you know, Torness, Torness it was called. So you had all these big power stations putting into the grid. Now we've got the wind and the waves, but, you know, I don't think it's necessarily a good idea. I think they should have mothballed Long Annet, because the coal for Long Annet could come from Fife Collieries. Right. Okay. You see, right. okay. So it's interesting. There was a, there was an MP Kareem at one point called Willie uh -huh. Hamilton. Now I didn't really right. think much of Willie Hamilton because he was an anti-monarchist. So he, right. he, okay. you know he was bad news from that point of view. But he also uh -huh. represented East Fife which was massive mining constituencies. And he said he would like to see the day when nobody had to go down a mine again because it was such a tough life. Right, okay. Interesting, right. isn't it? Yes, so against and, the monarchy and against mining as well. Well, he was against the monarchy and against mining, and of course he represented mining constituencies. Now, although mining's a very tough life, it's a huge uh -huh. community life and it's a job for life. Yeah. You yeah. see? And they were making it safer and safer as time went on. I mean, they've been mining for about four to five hundred years. Yeah. yeah. You know, where I stayed in Yorkshire, yeah, where I stayed in Yorkshire, one of the lords had sunk a mine to try and get into the coal industry. And when he got to the bottom of it, he found that the old monks had had all the coal away in the 1500s. 
<laughs> well, <laughs> you know, uh, that's clever. Yes. But the point I wanted to raise, Scotty, was as well in terms of if you look now what's rising within society in terms of money. Yes. That if you look petrol. Now, people to drive their car is their lifeline. If you drive your car, you're going to go to places, you're going to contribute to the local economies, you're going to go shopping. Yes. If you can't do that, first of all, you're not going to go and get that coffee somewhere. You're not going to go out and have a wee look about shopping and buy X, Y, and Z. So all these extra companies now start to get hit. And it's a vicious circle. Yes. People that are not spending money, then the supermarkets are going to put the prices up even more now because they, they don't want to make a loss. And and then it grows and it grows. And it, it grows. Gets, and then you know, people can't, can't afford to go for curries. People can't afford to go for, for, for pub meals. They can't afford to drink any alcohol at all. Um, you know... It, the, the food and fuel are going up, the absolute yeah. essentials. So are we thinking, why are we paying the price for Brexit? You know, we knew we were going to, and it will be blamed on um, the pandemic. It will be blamed on all sorts of things. All sorts of governments always tell you just how much hardship's going on. And, uh, you know, I remember Theresa May saying, there's no money tree, but they found 250 billion quid to squander on Brexit. Well, they always seem to find money when they need to find money. Oh, and yes. I think that's some, but whenever there is, they always say there's no money. That's like that in education. But then there, whenever anything, an initiative comes up, they've always seemed to be money somewhere. And I, I think really what the next stage now is after the build up to Christmas, not much goes on, people are spending. Um, and it's really, once Christmas finishes, I think that's when politics, not to keep it too political, it's going to really have to kick in because you've got the council elections yeah. coming up for me. And then I think after that, we need to fire the gun for the referendum to get people talking. Well, the referendum for independence, but also there's going to be a vote, I think, about how the pandemic has been handled. And uh, there's also going to be a vote at how well do they think the Scottish government is doing economically, educationally, you know, health-wise, etc., etc. So that's all going to kick in at elections as well. Yeah, yeah. I think it'll be interesting this year with the, the council elections because you're going to have uh, the ALBA councillors up and down the land. And I do think they'll steal a lot of the SNP vote. Um, so it might be a lot more mixed. Um, I'm just reading, like, I was thinking, for example, Falkirk Council, um, SNP one Falkirk, but the what you find with a lot, and you know yourself, Scotty, a lot of the councillors, Labour and Tories, uh, join forces. So they are they run the council, uh, and like the SNP. You see, got, I uh, think we need to see if Labour want to come out of the wilderness ever again. Yeah. And I've been watching about uh, Tony Blair and Gordon Brown and their time in power. And I didn't think I would ever see the day when I thought there were some really good things happening there. Because I felt the Labour Party died effectively on the 1st of May 1997 when New Labour took power. I, I remember that day very well, Scotty, because I was, I, I, was um, I, I just thought, wow, it's always been Tories. Yeah, and boom, that's it. We've now got a Labour Party, uh, and everybody spoke about Labour and how Labour was so good, and it, change is coming. And I just felt, I my own opinion, I might get shot down for saying this, but from what I've seen since when Labour were in power back then, and studying, etc., they created a generation of people that were on um, benefits. Yes. You more money on benefits than you did going out and getting a job. Yes. Uh, and, you know, when that happens, there's something wrong, you know. Yeah, absolutely. And do you not remember the big poster, Labour isn't working, and it was just a massive dole queue? Yes. I, I, I remember, I know, before I go, I remember when I was on holiday, and, you know, you speak to lots of people now when you're in the, the pubs and the bar. I remember I spoke to this old man and he turned around and he says, I've seen so many general elections, but I'll tell you one thing. The Labour come into power, they always screw it up. They always muck up the economy. They always do something. And then Tories get voted in to fix it all. 
then eventually people get fed up with Tories and then they vote Labour back in and the circle continues. And I thought, wow, well, um, and I, I suppose he's been right so far from what I've seen. Yeah, yeah, I mean, it's, it's, it's all there, it really is. But I think they need to be very clear about what they stand for. You know, so, so, you know, I mean, I think they have to be anti a lot of the stuff that the Tories are doing if they want to, uh, if they want to be voted in because, uh, you know, people go around saying, oh, the Tories are hated, the Tories are hated, I get asked on here, are you a Tory? You know, as if to say, because if you are, I hate you, that sort of nonsense. Now, I'm apolitical, as you know. But um, it's very, very interesting that uh, you can say, oh, I, we hate the Tories, but they always get voted in. So somebody must yeah. love the Tories. Yeah. Somebody's, somebody's not telling the majority. truth. Sorry? The silent majority. Yeah. At times, you know. The silent majority. So somebody's not telling the truth. When did you last hear somebody stand up on a huge public platform and say, I love the Tories? Yes, exactly. You know, no, yeah. nobody does that, and yet they vote them in. Yep, and they get in. You know, and, and you reap what you sow in this life. Yeah. Well, I always say to people, before I go, I always say to people, I'm not voting Tory. I said, well, you did vote Tory. I said, I've never voted Tory. I said, you did. You did. Because in 2014, when you voted better together, you voted to be part of a Tory UK. Absolutely. Effectively, you voted Tory. But Scotty, listen, thank you for taking my call tonight and I'll say thank you A privilege and a joy. Thank you do to you, Kareem. All the best, la. Scotty. <laughs> there we are. That's our Kareem. What a fantastic guy and what a great call. Love it. Absolutely love it. Now, to the telephones as quickly as possible. Murray O'Donnell, quantitative easing. Absolutely. There we are. Yes, now you're talking. So you're not them, that's what you're saying. There we are. Good evening, Scotty Dinky Doo. So the wonderful Craig Cochran. Good evening, Craig. Tell everybody about the phone in. You're live with Scotty's phone in. Who's that? Hello, Scotty. It's Thomas from Glasgow. Thomas from Glasgow. What a joy to hear you. How are things? Thomas, we were just mobbed on Saturday. My only fear is that we're going to short out the network on here as well as the radio station. Yeah. How do you go about to, to get banned these fireworks, man? Because I started doing my heat, not Yeah, well, we're talking about banning fireworks, and it, I think it would be such a boon and a blessing and also there'd be so many lives saved there'd be so many less injuries there'd be so many less at risk the emergency services wouldn't come under pressure all these things there's just so much to be gained why have we got fireworks in the first place because we're supposed to be celebrating burning an old catholic that failed to blow up the house of commons in the 1600s of course it is very very bad i remember the dogs were so frightened you know and the dogs i mean beautiful i can remember horses cows sheep all running up the hillsides that's the same for the animals and the, the persons you know what i mean i think we should think above ourselves and have a firework free year yeah i, I, I agree with you mate CBS yeah. says on here, Thomas, if you get rid of fireworks, you're getting rid of part of your history. Well, is it a part of our history we could well do with getting rid of? No. What benefit is there in fireworks? Zero. Precisely. Zero. Absolutely, Thomas. How are you doing anyway, lad? I'm not too bad, Scotty. Are you affected by the big conference coming? Uh, Doesn't he bother you? Good man, a good Glasgow man. That's it. <laughs> Lovely to hear you, and thank you for your call, Tom. Dinky anyway, do. Bye bye, bye bye, Lala. Top man, Thomas from Glasgow. What a fine fellow. Lovely to have you calling, guys. So good to hear from you. Has everybody tapped the bell and subscribed on YouTube? We need to see. Do you know what I'd love? If we could get by the end of tonight 
3,000 subscribers on YouTube. Think about it. Tell 10 to tell 10. You're live with Scotty's phone in. Who's that? Hello? Hello? You're live with Scotty's phone in? Non-verbal. I won't actually ban the number simply because some people are having trouble getting through just because we're so busy. What about the New Year fireworks from the castle? Well, Adam, that's a different thing. That's an organized display. We would allow that. You're live with Scotty's phone in. Who's that? Hello, Scott. It's Martin. How are you doing? I'm Martin. Did you do, buddy? Are you okay? Uh -huh. Yeah, yeah. Yes, absolutely. Somebody's just said fireworks, money going up in smoke. If we banned everything yeah. people did not like, you wouldn't have anything. CBS, not strictly true. Yes. Now, Martin. How's your day been, been today? My day's been outstanding today, Martin. I met some amazing people. Oh, good. Have you have you um, have you seen the film Braveheart? Yes. That's a really that's a really good film based in, in in the Scottish. Here's a guy called Random Stuff says ban everything, and then he goes just kidding. People have no money, but they have enough for fireworks. Says the art. So do so do you think it's okay to ban fireworks? Yes. Yes, I would ban them in a heartbeat. Uh huh. Yes, absolutely. Only public display we should allow. Uh huh. A public display of fireworks. Why? What do you think, Martin? I think they should ban fireworks. Right. It's a year for them, and all for because because it upsets a lot of the animals like um, dogs and cats and hedgehogs as well. Yes, upsets the hedgehogs, and we love the hedgehogs. I was walking the dog one night, and uh, he was lifting his leg near a hedge, and a little bit further down, I could hear this Martin. Wow. And I thought, what is that? And I looked under, and here's two wee hedgehogs. Wow. <laughs> Gorgeous wee guys. I don't know if you've I ever know. lifted them up. You've got to be careful because they are very prickly. I know. I'm very, 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 very jaggy as well. Yes, a friend of mine saw one crossing the road and he stopped and he went, oh, I'll just lift him out the road because he's going to get run over. And he put him on down in the, in the verge and I said, he'll be shouting and swearing at you because he's just spent the whole night trying to cross that road. How are you finding all the general elections next year? The general elections, well, we haven't had them yet, so it's difficult to find them one way or the other, you know? Yeah, I know, I know. So, see this um, phone in. Are you going to do it all year? Or are you going to take a break? Well, we'll before? see how it goes, Martin. If we can build it up and it becomes very, very popular, I don't mind doing it. Obviously, I don't get anything for it. I don't get any money or anything like that. But I do like the idea of informing, educating, and entertaining the public. And I do like the idea of an exchange of ideas that we all have. And I think you'll agree it's rather a fun experience. Yes. You know? So from that so point of view, I like to do it. Yes. So would you uh, meet anyone off here that you, you are talking to? Well, we might have a night. Here's a guy saying the watery leaf. This is a bit harsh on you. He says, Scotty, send Martin Dune the Swanee. He's a stalker. I am not a stalker. Well, good for stalker. you. Good. You tell him, Martin. What a relief. Please. Martin is not a stalker. I know I'm not. I am I, I am a very genuine guy. Very so genuine. Lovely. I, I have autism as well. Yes. And that's how people, and that's what I think I have sometimes. Now, don't listen. Don't you ever worry about that. You never, ever, ever need to explain or apologize on here for anything, particularly autism. We would encourage you to come on, to phone, and have a chat. Yes. Yes, absolutely. I know, buddy. Very, very much so. So don't you worry about him. I will sort him. Here's Jerry. Listen to this, Martin. Martin's okay. okay. We like you. Thank you. That's good, isn't it? Yes. 
Yes. How's um, Dee doing? Dee? Dee is absolutely amazing. She was on the other night. Hopefully she'll phone tonight. Nice. There's Chris so, says Martin loves hedgehogs. Yes. Only sell fireworks three or four nights before bonfire night. Yes. That's what they're saying. There you are. So Martin, please you don't you take that personally, okay? Okay, I'm not wait. Yes, don't you worry about a thing. You're very I'll welcome um, on here. I'll um, phone you again later on before you shut. If I'm um, not, I'll phone you tomorrow. No, you phone me tonight if you want for a wee blather. I'd lovely to hear you. And regards to your good lady. Thank you. And you are a genuine guy. Dinky doola. Dinky do, son. Bye, love you, bye. Love you lots. Bye, bye. There we are. That's bye, bye, bye. Our, that's our Martin. So there you yeah. go. So let's not be slagging each other off. What a relief. Be very, very deeply ashamed of yourself. Somebody mentioned the film Braveheart. It was fully Hollywooded. And factually inaccurate, says Kalilio. Well, Kalilio, I have to say, Martin loves the Austin Allegro VPs. Oh, what a car. I need to get a photo of you. Maybe they should ban a penny for the guy, says Angela. I don't think it is a penny now. They're looking for about two quid off you. So there we are, dinky-doo. Martin is, and I am Martin. Martin's okay. Dinky-doo, says Karim. There we are. When are fireworks not made without the bang? It scares pets. Yes, let's have silent fireworks. So when you light them, they just go. Something like that. How about that, guys? Would that be fair enough? Uh, they could at least not sell fireworks four to five weeks before bonfire night. The only problem you've got is, I suppose, the firework manufacturers have to make a living. So maybe the government could, uh, you know, help them out if we were to ban the fireworks. Send the fireworks, do the swan air, says Beachy, Beachy. Indoor fireworks, no thanks. I have heard of them. You let them off on a plate or something. Let Martin alone, he's okay, says Susan. Absolutely, Susan. Especially if the poor man is telling us uh, about his autism. That should not make any difference. Nobody ever has to justify themselves on Scotty McClure's TikTok or Facebook or YouTube or LinkedIn Live or Twitch. Is anybody actually watching tonight on Twitch? Can you follow me on Twitch? Scotty underscore McClure. Also, can you subscribe to the YouTube channel? We're after 3,000 subscribers. Let me know when we get it. Are you live on Scotty's phone in? Who's that? Hello, Scotty. It's Daniel. Daniel, Hi. lovely to hear you. Dinky doo. Dinky doo, yes. Uh, well, I wasn't going to come on and talk about politics, but I just had to mention what Kareem was speaking about at the start there about the, the Labour government 1997. Yes, do, do. Yes, I mean, I think it was one of the most progressive governments this country has ever had. I mean, it, uh, Tony Blair and Gordon Brown. Yes. Yes, they well, were absolutely you know, outstanding. Yes, I mean, apart from the, the uh, Iraq War. The Iraq War was the big yeah. downfall, but I think they really felt they had to follow America to keep the special yeah. relationship going. Yeah, yeah. You know, and then that, that really blew up the whole of the Middle East. I'm sure they could have had a word with Saddam, and it turned out, am I not right in saying, they didn't have the WMDs? No, in the end, it turned out that they, they didn't. So they went in on false information. And I also didn't like the way they broke the BBC's will. Oh, what was that? I didn't, I didn't well, well, that. what was happening was there were journalists at the BBC, of course, telling the truth as the BBC used to do all the time. And they were investigating the WMDs and Downing Street shut them down because, you see, there's been um, always a bit of pressure right from the start of the BBC about who actually had the ultimate say. And John Reith used to yeah. fight Churchill. John Reith and Churchill despised each other to the end, to the extent that poor Lady Churchill, a eh, poor Lady Reith, never got to Churchill's funeral because John Reith wouldn't let her go. Yeah, 
because they had tickets and they refused to attend, which I thought was a little bit narrow at the end. You know what I mean? Yeah. Yeah, I mean, John yeah. Reith was a remarkable man. He was a wonderful man, but he was a dreadful husband and father, and he was psychologically flawed. Mm. You know? Yeah. And uh, was it not uh, was it David Kelly that was mysteriously kind of... Dr. Kelly um, died in, in un unusual circumstances. Yes. You know? Yeah, yeah. and it says he, was, he, he kind of had some information on the... On the on the alleged report. Yes, yeah, so the, all that that whole episode was a bit murky and really didn't bode very well for the Labour government. Yeah, but I mean, apart from that. I Although, having that said that, I was thinking, would you like Tony Blair back as Prime Minister? done your stint that's you i think um well that wasn't the case that wasn't the case with churchill no you're right he did come back yeah. you know and i mean uh, he got he got rewarded for all his work during the second world war with the order of the boot and then he came back he didn't actually resign he resigned on the let me get this right he resigned on the 5th of april 1955, aged 80. That's right, yes. But he was kind of, he was, was he not encouraged to resign? Well, they he were wondering just how do they actually, uh, you know, close that particular chapter. So I think he was under a bit of pressure because he was also being very selfish in relationship to poor old Anthony Eden, who had carried yeah. him during the war. And Anthony Eden had carried him. I mean, literally, I think, you know, because uh, Churchill was, uh, he, he was a very, very heavy drinker, and uh, Eden would have had to run the show, but not get the rewards. And therefore, yeah. it was important that Churchill moved aside to give Anthony a shot. And then, of course, Macmillan stabbed Anthony Eden in the back over Suez, and that was the end of Anthony Eden, who was not only a fantastic uh, uh, would have been a fantastic prime minister. He wasn't a terribly well man at the time, but he was an outstanding foreign secretary. Yeah. You see? Yeah. But uh, I think Churchill was, it was, I think he was a bit too old for the job when he came back the second time. Yes. F.G. Green has just sent me a gold mine on TikTok. Is that not beautiful? Well, there you go. Winston Churchill was what we needed during the war. Winston Churchill's lips to God's ears. So there we are. Yeah. But anyway, that's, that was the only political thing I wanted to say. What I actually wanted to ask you about was the news of the Queen being in hospital for one day last week. Yes. And your thoughts on that? Well, I think any person uh, approaching the age of 96 may well need to have health checks. And I think her advisors thought she's doing too much. She's an outstandingly, she's an outstanding public servant, and she she does incredible work. And uh, you know she can handle so many of these things. Uh, F F G says you deserve the gold rain. Isn't that beautiful? Uh, you know she 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 can handle these things so well, and she has the experience. She has the authority. And she has the will. So, I mean, if anybody yeah. deserves a reward, it's the Queen. Mm -hmm. Absolutely. You know, and uh, I mean, I she does that. all her red boxes. She puts in a full shift. I argue every day with half-witted idiots on uh, on social media who don't understand. They go, huh, full shift. Huh, these parasites never worked a day in their life. Just rubbish they've had their heads stuffed with. You know? Well, you know what I found interesting? I don't know if you've watched it on um, Netflix. I don't know if you've watched The Crown. Uh, I've watched some of it. I've watched series one and two, and I've watched series... Yeah. Have I seen series three? I've seen series four uh, up to uh, Princess Diana. Yeah, that, that's the latest series. Well. Is that, is, have I seen the lot then? Well, yeah, the, the, the one with Princess Diana, that's the latest one that's out. So Right. Yeah. Now, a lot of it may or may not be accurate. I know that the royal family were very anxious that some of it was just not 
true at all in there are, are you know, not based on fact. Well, I actually learned quite a lot that I didn't actually know before. Like, the uh, being a man of my age, I wasn't alive when the Queen had an intruder in the palace. Oh, yes, uh, yes, when that, that guy came into her room. Imagine it is kind of dramatized. Well, no, I mean, it would be incredibly frightening. Uh, and she did yeah, call for help, and I don't think help arrived immediately. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I'm saying it's probably been a bit, obviously, we don't know what was said between the Queen. Well, I think, I think we heard at the time, if I remember, because it was all over the newspapers, particularly the tabloids, how could this happen, this breach of security? Yeah. And also, somebody attempted to kidnap Princess Anne. Yeah, oh, well, there you go. And her detective, her detective got shot, if I remember. But what I didn't know as well was that the Queen had uh, cousins in an institution that were kind of kind of kept secret from the Bose Lion side. Of the yes, I don't. I don't think kept secret. I just think not made a lot of. Who was kept kind of out of the picture was Prince John. Now Prince John was the Queen's father's brother, and uh, he died at the age of fourteen, and uh, he had epilepsy. And they didn't yeah. want Prince John to take an epileptic fit at some international thing. Mm. But he was a lovely yeah. wee boy, and um, his uh, his father, George V, you know, said honest John because he was very upfront, and uh, he, he was he was just a lovely wee guy. And Princess Mary, his sister, and Edward VIII, the king that abdicated, yes, David. Uh, he looked after them. Yeah. They loved him. Yeah, yeah. Uh, and I also, I didn't know Ed, Edward. The, well, it, it's been alleged in the Crown that Edward the Eighth went to during the war, went across to Germany and, and met with um, Hitler. And, well, there's and all sorts of him. allegations. I mean, I don't know if you've heard the story about Rudolf Hess landing in Scotland. No. Well, Rudolf Hess was Hitler's deputy. And he, fl right. he flew in an, uh, I think it was an ME 110 light bomber. And he said he, he was wanting to see the Duke of Hamilton. Yes. Right. Now, the Duke of Hamilton uh -huh. was an RAF man. He's the grandfather yeah. of the present Duke. And he was an RAF man, the old Duke. He was a, he was a very, very nice man, actually. And, um, and the father of James Douglas Hamilton, the MP. And, uh, and the Duke of Hamilton had a tiger moth and an airstrip at his house. Now, his house was called Dungavel House. Dungavel or Dungavel. A big country house uh, near to Ayrshire. And uh -huh. um, the landing lights were on at 8 o'clock, just before dinner, the night that Hess was arriving. And uh -huh. somebody had questioned one of the staff and said, uh, she said he wanted to see the Duke. He was hoping to see the Duke that night. And he said, but the Duke of Hamilton was not at home that night. And she said, I don't mean the Duke of Hamilton. I mean the Duke of Kent, who was the king's brother. Right. And he was killed in a shot Sunderland, flying over Sutherland in August 1942, I think it was. And the plane uh -huh. crashed into a hillside, and the Duke of Kent was killed. But strapped to his wrist was an attaché case full of 100 kroner notes. Oh, there you go. And they were also querying, because he was an RAF man, was the Duke actually at the controls? And one man escaped from that, but we never heard any more about him. Obviously, he was, you know, told not to talk about the accident. Yeah, yeah. Very, yeah, very yeah. interesting. All these things. Lots and Rudolf Hess Lots was then uh, taken to uh, Giffnock Police Station. Then he was taken uh -huh. to Buchanan Castle out in Stirlingshire, which is now a ruin. But at that, yeah. at that point, um, you know, it had been requisitioned from the Duke of Montrose. And um, uh, then Hess was imprisoned in Spandau prison in Germany 
and I think he hanged himself in the end, but some people said it wasn't even Hess. Now, what was Hesse's mission? People had speculated it might have been to say Hitler doesn't want war. Right. We don't know, but then could Hitler be trusted? Well, this is it. And uh, what about the, the, the do, do you know anything, do you know much about the Arthur Donaldson and, uh, you know, back in the, in the 40s, one of the founding members of the, the Nationalist Party in Scotland apparently being in contact with the Nazis? Well, you see, can I just put things in context here? Yes, I mean that is very much that is very much the truth. And they also said that the the Irish Tisoc was uh, in contact with the Nazis, etc. But a lot of people were in contact with the Nazis because before the atrocities started to come out, people were very taken by the glamour of the whole idea. So a lot of people wanted to have a look at this. There were young aristocratic girls, one I know of, uh, an old Argyle family, smuggled into some of the rallies just to hear Hitler speaking. And it was very exciting for young people. So just being in touch with the Nazis, it looks shocking in this day and age, but at the time, it was really quite something because they thought this guy is amazing. Well, the, the Arthur Donaldson story was that, that he would he said he would supply information to the Nazis in exchange for Scottish independence should you know the Nazis be assisted in invading the British Isles. Yes, but I mean Robert Boothby on behalf of the government went to meet Hitler and did meet him. Yeah. And it was very yeah. funny because Robert, Robert Boothby was quite an amusing character. He was a, a larger-than-life character, Bob Boothby. Uh, he was uh, the cousin of Ludovic Kennedy, the broadcaster. Yeah, Marvellous man, right, uh, Ludovic Kennedy. And then he was Churchill's secretary. And somebody wrote to Bob Boothby's father and said, I'm sorry that Bob's going with Churchill, because, uh, you know, when uh, he wants to make his point, and he will, Churchill will throw him out, and he will, you know, and therefore it would all turn to, turn to dust. But uh, when Robert Boothby went to see Hitler, he walked into this huge long room, and Hitler stood up and threw a Nazi salute and said, Hitler! And Bob Boothby put his hand up and said, Boothby! You know, just amazing. Here's somebody on here, Daniel, on TikTok. Back to the point about Tories, there's nobody else capable of running the country. Dinky doola. What do you think of that? Well, well And then somebody uh, above well, says disagree. Nicola is an icon. Well, I disagree with both those points, but I agree with what you were saying earlier. You know, there will be naive to think there are no Tories in Scotland. There are because there's some people are voting them in. Yes, of course. You know, but in, you know? how about this one, Daniel? What if all the parties in the Scottish government had to be pro independence? So you would have Scottish Tories, Scottish Labour, Scottish Greens, the SNP, Scottish Liberal Democrats, and they all had to be pro independence. How do you think that would look? Um. A true reflection on uh, Scottish society because not all of Scotland wants to be independent. So. Right. Why do you think, I mean, why do you think Scotland, some of Scotland doesn't want to be independent? Uh, I think because, you know, people like me, working class people, realise that, you know, we have in Glasgow, we have more in common with working people in Manchester, Liverpool, Birmingham. Uh, that we do with people in Latvia and Luxembourg and to leave the UK Union to go and join a European Union, even though it was good for us, you know, and I, I voted, you know, I didn't vote for Brexit. Well, it, it was good. It was good for 50 years and would have been good for another yeah. 50. Absolutely, yes. And, but I think the, uh, the state that we're in just now would be good for another um, 
200 years. But remember, uh, there's, there's, there was never any case for the union in the first place, and there is no case, or certainly no case has been made for the union today. Well, I think if the UK didn't exist today, we would be working uh, to make it exist. If Scotland, England and Wales were three separate countries, we would be looking to come together to form a union. Right, right, interesting. But would we want to be separately governed, you know, and have, uh, what can I say, some sort of common bond? Well, I think that there's an argument made for a fed, you know, for federalism within the UK, you know, so, um, you know, a kind of federal Britain, maybe a, a United States of uh, Britain, if you like. Yes, yeah, so what if we had it, like governors, who do we want to lead Scotland? Who do we want to lead Northern Ireland? Who do we want to lead Wales? Who do we want to lead England? Yeah, well... Yeah, and then the Scots are not going to be under the Tories. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. It's yeah. a thought, isn't it? Yeah, absolutely. But anyway, I'm going to go and let other people get on. So Daniel, a privilege talking to you. A lovely call. Dinky-doo. Dinky-doo. Bye-bye. Dinky-doo. ta -ra -ra. There we are, fantastic stuff. Very interesting points tonight, guys. Incredible fun in. There we are. What do we got here? Where's the mug of Errol Grey tea, Scotty? Andrew Downey. It is right here. It is bigger than my head. <laughs> and that's saying something, isn't it? Look at that. Ah. Right. You live with Scotty's phone in? Who's that? Scott, uh, ah, Glenn, how are you tonight? I'm not so bad, just thank you, thank yourself. Glenn, did you like your history lesson there? Definitely, yeah. <laughs> what, stuff. what about that, lad? I caught you on TikTok yesterday morning, Scott. Uh, oh, did you like it, Glenn? Yeah, good stuff, yeah. I saw you coming up on it and I thought, wonderful stuff. You still have to keep it fresh with fans, do yeah. Oh, yeah, yeah, you've got to. And I think that also tonight, um, just at half past six, I popped up yeah. on YouTube and TikTok together. And boy, yeah. what an incredible setup we had. Everybody was there. It's coming up to that. You know, we're, we're getting there, aren't we? Yeah, of course we are. Yeah, definitely. You know, I mean, it's... I mean, regardless of when you can get on or... Whatever you want to do and what that is, there's always a, a good part and you're on there, isn't there? Yeah, there's always something going on that's of interest to somebody. And there's nothing else in the world that will touch the internet phone in because it's unique, it's special, it's about yeah. the people, uh, you know, it's about us. There were another person I was thinking you looked a bit like, Scotty, Timothy West. Oh, Timothy West. Well, is Timothy West not... What birthday did he celebrate the other day? Was it his 80th? I think... Is that Prunella Scales? Uh, yeah, Prunella Scales' husband. Yeah. They went sailing through the canals. They did, yeah. And, of course, he's a wonderful uh, actor. He played, when I was young, Timothy West yeah. played Edward the Seventh in a fabulous a, ITV series. He's always been a very distinguished... Oh, honest, straight actor, superb yeah. actor, excellent. And yeah. Prunella, of course, wonderful as, um, you know, Basil Fawlty's wife, Sybil, yeah. in Fawlty Towers. I don't think they made enough Fawlty Towers, to be honest, Scott, did they? I'd love if they'd more. I, I could have watched that all the time. I loved it, man. You know, well, Fawlty. Have you ever seen John Cleese telling the story about where he got the idea for Faulty. I can't say I've got to know. Glenn, I've got to tell you this, right? I mean, forgive me yeah. if I don't tell it exactly as he tells it, obviously. Mm -hmm. But, uh, you know, outstanding. He and some fellow actors were filming something down in the South Coast, and he yeah. stayed at this little hotel. And the manager of the hotel was that kind of paranoid-type character. So he went yeah. down to him, he said, excuse me, and he was writing his books up, and he goes, yes, what is it? You know, and he said, could you call me a taxi, please? And he went, you want me to call you a taxi? And yeah. he said, yeah, if you don't mind, he said, oh, all right then. You know, this sort of stuff, right? It's almost the opposite of great service. Then yeah. 
yeah. he was saying to him, he left his briefcase at the hotel. So he went right. back and the guy said, what is it? Can I help you? I thought you were, were going out. And he said, no, no, I, I, I left my briefcase. He went, oh, it's yours, is it? Um, yeah, we put it in the garden. He said, in the garden? He said, yeah, yeah. Um, uh, we thought it might be a bomb. And he said, you thought it, he said, what are you thinking? He said, no, 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 we, you see, we've we've had one or two staffing problems recently. Now, you know, that kind of level of paranoia, obviously the man wasn't really the full shilling, you know? Uh, he's eccentric. But and and yeah. John Cleese obviously thought this was a fantastic character. And that was um, the background to Faulty. The way the way he marched in and all that. Yeah, marching in and uh, getting a hold of Manuel, trying to explain the old ladies that lived in the hotel. The major. How amazing was I the major? I remember that, yeah. Ah, oh, faulty, yes, yes. I mean, you know. The eccentricness of it was just outstanding. Work. Just total eccentricity. And I mean, the major, that's exactly the kind of character, perhaps. Uh, you know, just, I mean, I'm only characterizing on here, but say the Major yeah. had served in India during the Second World War, had come back to this country, thought, I, I don't want to buy a house. There's a very reasonably priced hotel. I'll, uh, I'll just live there and they'll do my laundry and I'll get a drink and some lunch, you know. We've all got We've all got that eccentricness in us, are we, somewhere? Oh, somewhere as well. And I loved that <laughs> when the poor soul passed away and the old ladies saw him in the cupboard. They put him in the cupboard. And one old lady, Miss oh. Tibbs, she's shouting, in the cupboard! He goes, no, no, not again today. You've had enough. <laughs> you know, I mean, just brilliant. I mean, exactly. Richard Wilson, another one. What was that one? Richard Wilson in uh, Victor Maltrow. Oh, yeah. I mean, Richard yeah. Wilson with that. Yes. I mean, all that kind of yeah. carry on. Wonderful so stuff. Can... Now, Material. now, in One Foot in the Grave, Richard Wilson's wife, yeah, was Annette, um, Annette Crosby. Annette Crosby yeah. was Queen Victoria in that one I told you about with Timothy West. She, she was. Uh, I vaguely remember playing that. Edward the Seventh. Yeah. She's a fabulous actress. Yeah. Yes. She's yeah. up there with Georgie Dench in a way, isn't she? She honest. is. Yeah. Vic, yeah. Yeah. Absolutely. Yeah. Yes. Annette Crosby. She have much credit as she. No, but I lo there's a lot of actors like that. Have you never looked at something you've been watching, and there's a supporting actor in it, and you think, "Oh, what's his name?" And he's in yeah. everything. Mm -hmm. You know, fantastic. <laughs> The new Larkins has come out, though. You know, the uh, spin off from Darling Buds of Mayskai. I saw that the other night. Yep, absolutely. Bradley, Bradley Walsh is playing. Uh Pop Larkin. Pop Larkin, yeah, excellent. But I mean, you know, it, I'm, I've no doubt it will be excellent, but you know, you, you can't help your mind gonna, going back uh, to David Jacobs. You're never going to. Not David him, Jacobs, not though, David yeah. Jacobs, sorry. David Jacobs was the DJ. Back to David. <laughs> Place them, I no, you're never. Know, tell me again, back. David. Uh, second David name, Jason. David Jason. Jason. Why did I say you Jacobs? Yeah, yeah. It's, it's impossible, isn't it? David Jason, and I'll tell you, I, I, I loved obviously David Jason, only fools and horses, mm -hmm. but I loved, I loved when he did his uh, Frost. Yeah, you know, I brilliant know character. Orange. Yeah, he playing. Played, he played an older. He played an older guy in Porridge, older than he was today at the time. Yeah, absolutely. Just just excellent stuff. You know, I mean, outstanding an actor. Rounder. Yeah, and, and I loved him playing oh. Granville. Yeah, fantastic. Yeah, he in, plays the, yeah in Open All Hours. Then he comes back and plays the uh, more experienced. Yeah, he the, comes back as the idea. shopkeeper. Ah, yeah. oh, it's been a funny old day. He, he <laughs> takes over after... Uh, Gone I mean, how many oh, times when you and I were little did we see a shop like open all hours? Yeah, crazy. You yeah. ran down to get some sweets, you got fags for your dad, you know, all these things. Yeah. And we're still going to Clapper Scotty when, when he's putting his fingers in till I cry and he's going, well, not that till again. <laughs> Brilliant stuff. And all uh, candles and all. And Nos, Nos Gladys Emmanuel. Yeah. 
Winterbury. Hey. Yeah. Fantastic. Do you know, Glenn, we'll need to go. We're just about out of time. But the four candles one were best for all. Oh, that fantastic. was beautiful, that. Four candles. Four candles. No, so, four yeah. candles. Nice one. Candles oh, for yeah. folks. <laughs> and it's goodbye from him. And it's good night from him. Did you do that? There we are. That's our Glenn. What a great guy. And now you don't get comedies like that anymore, says Danny. Night, night, every day. A week break. Fantastic. Just a week at the caravan. Down at air. Lovely, lovely. Dee's still not on tonight. No, she's not. So we'll have to have a word with Dee. How absolutely amazing. I can't believe, guys, we've got four minutes of the show left. Who's this? Oh, ring again, please. We seem to have lost you there. Right, we'll see if we can get them on uh, last call. Fantastic. What have we got here? Tremendous stuff. Uh, love it. Nicholas Sturgeon did right. The Blair was a Tory in a red suit, says Colelio. Uh, there we are. Now, um, what have we got here? It'd be naive to think. Oh, what have we got here? You're live on Scotty's phone in. Who's that? Hello? Hello, can you hear me? Oh, you're non-verbal. Fair enough, right? Okay. Give us a ring, guys, as soon as you possibly can. And let's see if we can squeeze in another couple of calls before it's time up. There we go. I can't believe how fast tonight has gone. Just incredible. My goodness me. So to the telephones as soon as you possibly can. Scotty, are you pro Indie Ref 2? Yes, I think it would do no harm to have another referendum because Brexit has moved the goalposts. You're live with Scotty's phone in. Who's that? Hello, Scotty. It's Martin. How are you, son? Martin, how lovely to hear you back. Martin, I do hope nobody upset you earlier with these things. They have them not. They, 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 are, they, are, they are fine students. Um, um, students nice. Yes, and thank you for being you because that just proved to them who's the top man. I know. I See? Know, I know, so good for you. That was lovely. You, you pulled a blinder there, Martin. I know. Top man. Now, what do you think of tonight? Um, tonight's been absolutely outstanding, fantastic. Just amazing. Amazing as well. And um, there's, a, there's a couple of other students I need to ask you about. Um, the Vicar of Dibley, um, Don, Don French. Don French, yeah. outstanding, fantastic. There's um, Dad's Army as well. Dad's um, Army. Oh, Martin, you're talking my language. You and I are into the same television. There's um, Wild to Heart. There's Claro, there's um, When the Heart Is, there's um, up, Upstairs and Downstairs, there's, um, oh, God, there's other shows. Um, there's, there's what are you like? Uh, well, that's a good old number that you've mentioned there, Martin. I know, I know. Fantastic. And, um, um, plus, I like, um, I, I, am, um, I like all the movies as well. Um, I, um, I watched Halloween Kills a couple of nights. Oh, ago. Yeah, that sounds a bit frightening for me. I don't like anything too scary. No, 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 it's not. I, I'm not, I'm not no. too good with the scary stuff, Martin. Oh, how did, um, how did, how did you think tonight's chat um, with everyone, including me? Oh, outstanding, very much, including yes. you, and it's lovely to hear you. Yes, you too, buddy. Hey, and, and we'll catch up soon, dinky do. I, um, I can um, I can inform you. I can I, I can phone you tomorrow. Of course you can. It'll be lovely. Look forward okay. to. Cheers, Martin. Bye. Love you. Bye. Love you lots. Night, night, Lala. There we are. That's our Martin. We're just about out of time, folks. I'm just going to say goodbye to the TikTokers. Bless you all. Love you lots, TikTokers and Taralas. Oh my goodness me. There we are. That's us. Wow. Incredible. There we go. Guys, we are out of time. I can't believe it. What a fantastic night tonight. Thank you so much for joining us. Please join us tomorrow night at nine o'clock sharp, Monday to Thursday, nine till 10, Friday and Saturday, 10 until 11. This is Scotty McClue saying dinky-doo to every single one of you. Good night. God bless. And ta-ra-las. <laughs>